Um, first off, I feel like this is going to be a very big, momentous month. And I feel it is like that for all the air signs. Um, I'm getting repeats in cards, in, in themes and, you know, energies. Um, I did the Aquarius reading, and I feel like it's coming up in this reading as well. Haven't done Libra yet, but um, we'll see. What I'm feeling as well is, uh, once again, this is... We're talking about the sun and the moon. This is the way that other people see us. The exterior, the veneer, the things that are tangible, the things that are very uh, apparent when they physically see us okay they see you as someone who's very successful have a tremendous amount of wealth happy-go-lucky carefree optimistic really fun and exciting and just uh, amazing to be around okay so you exude a lot of confidence and then on paper or in person you look like you're very determined. You look like you run the show. You make the executive decisions. You're a force to be reckoned with. And you're so disciplined and you're so like driven and motivated and, you know, to succeed. That's the way that other people see you. And you are all of these things. You are all of these things as well. So on the surface, this is what it is. But then beneath the surface, what I have here is the moon in the reverse position. And I feel like it's almost, you know, the sun and the moon right on top of each other in perfect alignment. And it just seems as if, you know, the professional life, everything's going really well. But emotionally, something is bothering you. Something is missing. And it could even be that sense of, where's my tribe? Where are my people? Where is that one person that can, you know, complete me? As a sign of duality, like you and the Piscean people, you want that strength in numbers. You want that person that telepathically you can communicate with, you know, kind of like the twin, the, the alter ego, or the person that just like instinctively just gets you. You don't have to say more than like, you know, in 10 words or less, they just get you. You don't have to over explain. You don't have to argue. You don't have to like uh, school them on, you know, what you're thinking. You don't have to worry that they're going to judge you. You don't have to worry that they're going to treat you, you know, like super nice to your face and then stab you in the back. So you're looking for that kindred soul connection, that soulmate. And I feel for many of you, it can feel, you know, as the sign of duality, it can feel very empty and lackluster when the other person's not in the picture. So what I feel is there is somebody here that is in your life that you feel this way with. You have this perfect affinity with. But for whatever reason, for whatever reason, there might be some, um, some things it could be your professional life that's preventing you from coming together. You're kind of conscious about, you know, how is this going to look professionally? Is this going to, you know, hinder my progress professionally? If I get involved with them, is that going to really hurt my chances? So I, I see many of you doing some deep reexamination or some deep, like, heavy thinking. What do I do? You know, on the one hand, there's this really strong connection. This person just gets me. But on the other hand, I can't get involved because of social, cultural expectations as well. So what are you going to do? What are you going to, you know, um, which side are you going to steer towards? Are you going to do what's socially ex expected of you out in the professional public space? Or do you follow your heart here? So there is this major, major dichotomy between what is expected of you versus what you want. And for those of you, honestly, who are really, really successful, you know, you've got money in the bank, you've got um, timeshares, you've got a house, property, built up children even, uh, possibly even a happy marriage. Um, I feel it's, it's almost like you've done everything by the book in order to get all of these things. And then you just realize that what am I doing with all of these things when I am not emotionally fulfilled? 
I was, you know, um, misled to believe that this would make me happy. All the, the public accolades, the public success and all the, you know, the, the public expectations or the social expectations. But deep down, are you completely emotionally happy with everything that you have? Or do you want something a little bit more? And I feel as if there is a big, big decision here when it comes to do we continue on the same path or do we need to make a detour to kind of realign ourselves with what it is that we feel is connecting to us and what it is that we feel will bring us a lot more, you know, contentment. Um, honestly, what I feel here is I feel like you've got some secrets, things that you're holding in, you're not telling anybody about. And I feel for many of you, you're lining up some type of a career move, like a major, major big move. There might have been an offer, somebody telling you, hey, come work with us. Come join us. Come be a part of our team. Come collaborate with us. I'm giving you this opportunity so you can scrap everything that you have behind. Wherever you are, you're very, very, very content. You're very content. And you are very visible as well. But I feel like you would, you know, forsake all of that in order to do something that makes you really, really happy. And so you might be, you know, um, looking at or, or really considering a job offer. You might also be considering collaborating with somebody. And I would urge you to really look carefully, read between the lines, okay? I feel that you've gotten where you are, you know, in, in terms of, professional successes on your own and so if somebody is getting involved with you and they're trying to ride your coattails um, you want to be a little bit careful because this is all about intuition this is all about what do you know what are the concrete actions what are the patterns of behavior that you're able to decipher from the other people are they a little bit you know opportunistic grabbing on to social connections or whatever it is that's um, thrown their way do they have a history of being very sneaky and very dubious and very amoral and and you know problematic can you trust them so I feel like you have to kind of be careful about not um, you know not getting involved in something just because on the surface it looks nice or you have a, a very special affinity towards somebody soul connections honestly uh, we have many soulmates soul connections I feel they're they can feel very out of this world they can feel very very strong they have this magnetic pool and you know deep down you guys are hopeless romantic so you're always scanning the horizon to find that soulmate just don't be duped Okay, just don't be duped that your need to connect is so great that you overlook reason. Okay, so especially if you're dealing with someone who has a track record, that's not so great. And especially if you're dealing with somebody who has a history of being very opportunistic, of being very gossipy, of being very, very um, like vocal and just uh, uncooperative. And especially vocal when they are uncooperative. So these are considerations that you have to take into um, account when you're trying to, you know, decide whether or not it's a good time to start a new venture. Um, with this high priestess situation here, I feel for many of you, it's kind of like mums the word. Um, there are things here that you're just handling on your own you're not really wanting to collaborate with other people you're not telling other people you want to take care of on your own which is very very admirable but the people around you you're keeping them in the dark and that kind of scares them so they're going to be picking and prying for answers because they want to be let in they want to be you know kind of like let into your inner sanctum so that they can understand what you're trying to do or what you're trying to achieve I feel for many of you here, we have a water sign, first of all. And the water sign, this is a Pisces, a Cancer, or a Scorpio. Um, the hangman deals with a sacrifice, okay? 
This can be a sacrifice for the greater good or the sacrifice to appease another person. Many of you are involved here with a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And this is a relationship where I feel like, you know, as an air sign dealing with a water sign, I feel like they're making very great emotional demands on you. They could also be very emotionally like kind of up and down as well. When you're with them, they feel very secure. And then when you're out of the picture, they feel very insecure. And so the majority of the time you're spent, you know, trying to figure out how to appease them, how to stabilize them, how to reassure them. So the relationship is all about, um, all about expending a lot of energy to calibrate this person. And it doesn't really leave much room for you to grow professionally. It doesn't leave much energy and resources left for you to develop on your own. And so you have this person that is really caring. And I feel as well, if this is not a love relationship, it's somebody within your family unit that you really care for that might be undergoing some type of health issues or they are affected by some health issues of other people that they care about and they're not operating at their uh, best for this month. So there's like heavy dealings with this water sign and it just seems to me as if there are things that you're not able to tell them. There are things that you're trying to help them with and I feel like it's becoming a big burden on you and you're not able to voice and verbalize the fact that, you know, I'm a little overwhelmed. I don't know what else I can do. Can you take care of yourself? Like, um, I just feel like it's a, a situation where emotionally it's a little bit too overwhelming. It's a little bit too heavy and too overwhelming. And I feel that it's making you uncomfortable. I have as well, wow, yeah, water signs. But let me talk about this. Not seeing eye to eye with your partner. Not seeing eye to eye with your partner. Uh, one person wants to be intimate. The other person is busy. One person is like feeling amorous and the other person is like dealing with the kids, for example. So it's like the timing's really off. And this can be a very, very good connection, assuming both people are on the same page and looking at each other and having the time to really invest in each other. But when it's like this, it's almost like night and day. You might be geographically separated from your partner and there is still like there's lingering or there's some type of a temptation in the interim. Okay, so it's, it's almost like two people involved here. And if you're physically separated from your partner in some way, there might be a third party coming into the picture. I'm also sensing as well, some of you might be dealing with this earth sign here, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And this can be the, the person that is also emotionally very, very distraught. They're emotionally unstable. They're very concerned. They're very worried. Um, the things that they are worried about as is the nature of the king of pentacles. They're worried about their public image. They're worried about their finances. They're worried about, you know, their livelihood and the, the really superficial things that you don't think really matters in the long run. So you're dealing with somebody like that. And I feel like they're looking for answers and they're, they've got you a little bit, uh, emotionally just, um, out of sorts okay it's like you have to answer to this person and they're relentless they don't really they don't really um they don't really take no for an answer they're relentless and if it's personally affecting their financial stature or their professional image they're not going to take no for an answer they're going to be very pushy about you know getting an answer out of you and I also feel as well, it's a third party coming between a couple. Third party coming between a couple. So you've got a lot of uh, things that you're keeping hidden for this month. And I also feel as if you're, the people that you, you feel like you can confide in, they're, they're not there. Okay. And it, I almost sense like, I almost sense like, who do I trust? 
Who can I trust? Who do I trust? The sevens are, sevens are very spiritual number. First of all, this is like, you know, the things that you can physically see. And then this deals, this seven of swords here deals with paranoia. Things that are going behind the scene, possibly things happening behind your back that you're not really aware of. <coughs> Excuse me. And so there's a lot of things here about, you know, um, things that are under the radar, things that are under the current, um, not knowing who to trust, not knowing who to confide in. But at the same time, having a lot of things that you wish you could get off your chest, that you wish you could, you know, take back, that you wish you could uh, run by another person, wanting a person to bounce ideas off of, but not knowing who, when or with whom it's safe to do so in your environment. So this is a very uncomfortable reading, um, Gemini's. And uh, I wish I had like a little bit more of a celebratory energy for you guys because, you know, just for your birthday time. But I, I feel as if you've got a lot of, um, it's like you're being, you're, you're in this little fishbowl and everybody's looking at you. And um, you're very highly visible, very, very visible. And you're also, you know, like... Um, on display and it can feel very uncomfortable so what you do you, what you decide to do whatever course of action you take you have to be extra careful about you know backlash about um, about misinterpretation about people taking what you say out of context about defending yourself as well and knowing when to fight a battle and when to you know not make something into a battle. So it's like pick your battles. But at the same time, it can feel very, very uncomfortable. So what I feel here overall is um, needing to get things off your chest. You know who your friends are. You know who you can trust. And I feel like you have this intuitive sense of knowing that something is right for you or who is right for you. And those are the people that you're going to need to confide in. Um, the other thing I'm sensing as well, I feel like someone is leaving the workplace. Someone that you can confide in or you really, really trust is leaving the workplace, okay? And I'm seeing it here with this moon card. So professional life, something is gone. Something that, that brings you a lot of emotional stability is someone is leaving the workplace, and then I feel more people coming in. So, you know, there's somebody else that you're making a connection with. And then on top of that, what we have here as well is breaking free from temptation and things that are no longer, um, not letting th these things hold you back. Gaining a victory over something, a triumph, possibly over our baser desires and walking away from that. And whatever that has kept you very, very stuck. And I feel like, you know, this deals with just temptation. This deals with negative influences. People influence you in a negative way. Um, or even, you know, the, the scramble for wealth and resources and money where you kind of fell astray, where you kind of, um, you, you felt like someone was making promises that you would make this much, and then you waited and waited and waited for it to come to fruition, and then they led you astray. So this is the month where you definitely can free yourself from these restrictions. I do see a lot of temptation here, okay? Um, Third-party influences, um, temptation from another person. And there's definitely some very strong soul connections here. Soul connections are not always romantic connections. They can be. But if you're mistaking the soul connections for purely, um, you know, like physical, sexual, romantic connections, then you would, you know, go through life like uh, messing up those relationships if you are in other relationships. So soul connections are there because they kind of um, resonate with you on it on a past life level but the past life energy you know put that aside cast it aside you're here with each other to kind of connect and understand each other and kind of reinforce the fact that okay we're not crazy we're in it together we're not crazy it's everybody else that's missing the point so i feel like you have a connection here a really strong connection with somebody 
but there's a lot of rumors associated with it. There can also be a lot of, um, I don't want to say negativity, but I feel like if it's not handled well, it can lead to a lot of temptation and it can lead to a lot of confusion as well. So this month, focus on your business. Focus on what you need to do. Trust your intuition this month. If you're getting an inkling that somebody is riding your coattails, if you're getting an inkling that somebody is just taking advantage of you, or they're you know making promises that they can't keep, be mindful of the track record. So if that's like you know the way that they interact with you or they interact with other people in their field, be mindful of it and just don't get involved in it. Okay? You have people that are on your side that will really really help you move ahead and so rely on that okay so keep yourself very very focused this month and try your best to you know steer away from gossip and rumors and confusion trust your intuition and go with it okay